Hello everyone and welcome to the War Clusters introduction video. War Clusters is a completely new tool for the Unity game engine which I just released on the Unity Asset Store. As you can see it makes it very easy to swap materials from renderers or even disable and enable certain components such as lights, renderers, particle systems and many other things dynamically in your scene based on uh, the conditions that you define. So War Clusters has many use cases in all kind of games. It doesn't matter if your game is top down, third person, first person. Uh, but one of the core use cases is uh, if you're making a top down game. So let me show you here. Uh, we have a building, right? So it's made of multiple floors. And if I now go ahead and um, disable the cluster component from World Cluster and go inside the building, well, as you can see, not much happens, right? And uh, we are not able to navigate this building. We can't even see what's going on inside. And in this case, that's why you need a solution. And World Clusters is a great solution for that. So let me turn on the uh, cluster component back on. And as I get inside now, you see that World Clusters gives you full control over what is enabled and when and how things look in your scene based on those clusters. So let me go ahead and go to the other floors also. And as you can see, each floor of this building has its own cluster and each of those clusters have their own rules, which means that in the last floor, we only um, see, you know, we only hide the roof and this uh, front wall, we swap the material to something transparent. And if we go back down, you will see that once again, each floor is seamlessly transitioning from uh, one to another. And we always keep our character visible, which makes it uh, perfect to um, you know, interact with whatever is inside, NPCs, objects, etc. So how is this working? So um, first of all, you have to understand that um, clusters are essentially cluster groups on a cluster component. So here, as I said, we have this building. And what I did here, I simply attach the cluster component from World Clusters. And here you see that we have as many cluster group as we want. Um, another few things uh, which are cool is that you can expand all cluster group to immediately see everything in it. And you can also collapse them all as well as filtering them by name in this search bar. Now, if you look at the uh, floor one cluster group, you see that it is made of different entries. Once again, you can have as many as you want. And each of those entries are something you need to view as a function. And the reason for that is because they each have a type, for example, game object, light, render, particle system, etc. So depending on the type of an entry, it's going to trigger different actions in your scene, right? Anyway, all of these entries are what makes a cluster group what it is. And each of those cluster groups can be triggered in many different ways. In this case, in this demo scene, you see that we are using a collider here. So as I enter the uh, building or rather the first floor of the building, it is going to trigger uh, this specific cluster. I could now go ahead and show you how it works. So here we have the collider, which is re responsible for the floor one of this building. And uh, once again, very, very easy to set up. As you can see, all you need is a collider component. So this could be a sphere or whatever. In this case, it's a box. And here we have a cluster collider component. I could go ahead now and remove this component. And as you can see, it is no longer hiding it, right? So I'm going to set up the uh, cluster collider again, just to show you how quick it is. So here, all you have to do is add the cluster collider component. Here we go. Now you can drag and drop the cluster reference of, you know, what cluster you want to trigger by this collider. So in this case, I just drag and drop the house. And now it's going to let you select your cluster group. So you can select one. So if I go ahead now and select the floor two, you will see that if I enter the floor one, well, now it's showing the floor two, which is not what we want here, of course, but it's just to show you how easy um, things are. And now that I selected floor one, you see that it works exactly as before. Now, collisions are not the only way that you can trigger um, clusters with. For example, I also provide you a great uh, component in work clusters, which allows you to uh, interact with game objects. So essentially you can click it, for example, and it will trigger a specific cluster. So let me show you that. Uh, here we have the uh, light cluster and here we have the light trigger, which is this um, red rectangle. 
And here, same, it has a collider and it has a cluster instant trigger component on it. Once again, I could uh, remove it and show you how it's set up. So cluster instant trigger here, once again, is going to ask us to uh, drag and drop a cluster. So in this case, I drag and drop the light one. And here it can choose what action should be triggered when we click the enter one or the exit one. I'm going to explain those actions a bit later. And here, same, it lets you select cluster group. In this case, we only have one. Now, very cool thing, it lets you toggle it. And uh, now you could already use that to trigger it by Unity events. So of course, like I said, um, those clusters can also be triggered by Unity events or code. So when it comes to code, it's one single line of code you can use anywhere in your code base. But if you don't want to have to use any Unity event or whatever, you can turn on mouse actions. And in this case, you can choose, for example, if it should happen on click. So now as I click it, it's going to trigger it. I can turn that off and it's not going to work anymore. Or it could even be on mouse enter. And in this case, mouse exit also. So as my mouse enters the object, it triggers. And as I take it out, it triggers again. Now, once again, here, my job is to give you as much option as possible, but I'm sure you're going to find many use cases for those things. So just as a recap, each of those clusters in your scene that you set up, such as the first floor or the slide cluster or the particle one here, each of those, you have the option to trigger them either by a collision, a unity event, by code, or by using the custom component I give you here. Now, one more um, thing about collisions. Here, if we look at the cluster group, the floor one, and if we look at entries here, you see that every single entry has this condition field. What this means is uh, whatever you drag and drop here is the rules that are uh, going to be um, enforced when you collide with uh, this cluster. What I mean by this is if you don't have those rules here, any object that collide with your cluster will be able to trigger it, right? Which is, of course, not ideal. Now, um, the way you create those conditions is either by duplicating one from the demo or you simply right click, create, blink, work cluster, collision condition. And here is going to create a new um, condition like this. These are scriptable objects. The reason I made them scriptable object is because it's now possible for you to create a rule one time only and you just drag and drop it in your condition field every time. You don't have to every time uh, set up those conditions. So you can have as many as you want. And as you can see, they have a, diff a few options. The first one is a game object name. So here you can, uh, for example, like I'm doing here, here I just wrote the uh, player click to move name. So the name of my game object. And if a game object with this name is colliding with a cluster, it's going to work. Now you can have other conditions, for example, layer mask. So you could require an um, object with the layer water, or you could also require a tag, for example, the tag player. Now you can see that each of those also have a rule and it's either optional or required. So for example, you could have two optional options in which case one of them at least as minimum needs to be valid. And the required is no matter what is um, uh, like optional or whatever, this will need to match anyway. So this will need to be matched. So yeah, once again, like I said, you can create your own conditions and then all you have to do is uh, drag and drop them here or just click here and select the one you want in your entries. Now, uh, the way, uh, some more information on how those cluster works. For example, let's look at the uh, renderer one for the floor one. Here you see that we have a list of renderers, which is what renderer will be affected by this um, entry, right? So all renderers here will be affected by that. And the ones that are not in it in your scene, of course, will not be affected. So very easy, this list starts at zero and you're the one who drag and drop them in it. Now you see a quick, uh, nice option here. If I turn off keep shadows, you see that as I go inside the building, now the sun is actually, um, you know, affecting the house and there are no shadows anymore. So that's really not uh, a desired behavior in this case. So I gave you the option with one checkbox that you just turn on and it will then disable the um, renderers, etc. but it will keep the shadows. And now every entry works uh, the same. So you always have this action part of the inspector, in which case it tells you, hey, when I enter, this should happen. When I exit, this should happen. So if we look at the material change here, for example, um, which is the part that's taking care of making those walls transparent here. If I go ahead here and change the transparent material with the red one, 
As you can see now, when I enter, it is red. And when I exit, it's the same as before. So very, very easy. Here, you also have a field for a delay in seconds. So uh, if you put five seconds here, this uh, entry is going to trigger five seconds later. And that's how um, cluster components are made. As you can see, this one has uh, multiple cluster groups. So here we have floor two, uh, floor three, and so on. And they each have their own settings with different objects. And that's pretty much how we decide what object is visible and when. So let me go back in full screen. There is another one, um, another example I want to show you here. So same um, use case as the building here, but this time with an actual house, which is, by the way, from uh, the Suntail pack, which I'm going to link in the description. It's a very, very nice pack. So here you see that we are on the first floor and uh, everything is visible normally and nothing is in your way. And if I go to the second floor now, you see that we can now perfectly see our character still, as well as seeing the foundation of the house. Now, the other cool part here is um, if I go ahead and focus in the first floor, you can see that uh, I'm going to go side by side. The props have been disabled here. Why did I disable the props? Well, it's very simple. We do not see them. Here, if I go back to full screen, we literally don't see those props anymore. So why would they be active in your scene, right? So this is a way for you to easily gain um, performance and better frame rate by not affecting the visuals and the quality and look of your game. So here, if you notice, we have better performance. Of course, it's not uh, displayed right here, but we can disable light, we can disable game object, we can disable particle systems, and we only show them when we are uh, back in the first floor. So here, as you see, as I'm entering the first floor, they are now visible. But the really cool thing is that this is not making uh, your scene looks worse in exchange of some performance. It's the same look, your scene looks exactly the same. It's only hiding things which are not visible anyway. So that's uh, one really cool thing about that. One last thing I want to show you in this video is um, another use case for wall clusters. But before that, let me just add some maximum uh, camera height so I can unzoom much more. This character controller, by the way, is not um, provided in your clusters, but it's also one of my own products that you can get on my asset store page. Anyway, if I go in this part of the demo scene here, you see that as I move around, we can see different clusters being um, enabled and some others being disabled. So in this case, we only enable and disable those kind of like gray square, right? Which is uh, on its own, not really impressive. But now imagine those gray squares being hundreds of lights, hundreds of particle systems, or even game objects, which are, for example, in a village or in an area of your map that you're not seeing anymore. So imagine that here in this uh, specific, or even here in this specific uh, gray square, you have hundreds of lights and particles, which is really nice, right? Because when you come close to it, then you can enjoy this great um, looking part of your scene. Now let's go far from it. And here at the bottom, for example, and here uh, we are very far extra, right? So we may not need those things anymore. Those lights and particle systems are still in your scene. They are still costing you performance, but we don't need them. So war clusters can help you uh, disabling those. And once again, it gives you full con control over at what distance it should be disabled and how far um, those other clusters should be enabled from your player and so on. So that's another great way to use war cluster and um, to gain some extra performance. Now, this is not only about performance. War clusters is also very, very, very cool to use for uh, gameplay. So for example, you can imagine um, that's something that I'm going to make possible, of course, in the RPG Builder integration. But for example, in terms of gameplay event, you could have a, a quest that you complete and now you have a completely new dungeon appearing in front of you or somewhere in your map, or you have a completely new area unlocked in your map, or you have many things, or maybe you have something, some rock that was um, blocking a path for you before and you can now disable it easily with uh, those clusters. So the uh, amount of use case and possibility are endless. I'm going to leave this up to you. I'm just making sure that you have as much option as possible to play with. So definitely let me know in the comments by email or on Discord um, what you think could be an improvement or what you think could be a nice new features. I'm always happy to hear those and to apply when they make sense. So thank you for watching.